All right, everyone, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Josh, do we have recording on? Doesn't show recording. Yes, it is. Okay, very good. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about the introduction to On the Water Leader Skills course. Before we get started, I want to remind you that you can, um, even though all of you participants are muted, you can ask questions. You should have a Q&A button or something like that, depending on your user interface. And if you have questions, go ahead and enter them there. Uh, if we can't answer them immediately, we'll go back to those at the end um, and, uh, and try to cover them. Josh, would you go ahead and advance to the next slide, please? So the problem we're trying to solve is to address the, the technical skills challenges of, of bringing new adults into into our C-Scout program. One of our biggest, uh, the biggest limits to our growth has been the difficulty of, of onboarding new leaders, new adult leaders. If you're in the Scouts BSA program, an adult that's crossing over with their son or daughter can usually sort of fake camping skills long enough to learn to be useful. On a boat, that's not quite so easy. So our need for technical training is, is greater than theirs. Next slide, please. In the Scouts PSA side, there are two main training courses for a new outdoor program leader. There's the leader specific training course, and then there's an outdoor skills course called Introduction to Outdoor Leader Skills or IOLS. That course is intended to give a new adult leader a good start toward leading scouts through the first ranks of advancement in a safe and appropriate way. In Sea Scouts, we have long had an equivalent of a leader specific training course in our Sea Scout Adult Leader Basic Training. But until now, we haven't really had a course that corresponds to IOLS, and that's the role of this new IOWLS course. Next slide, please. That stands for Introduction to On the Water Leader Skills. Like IOLS, uh, the intent is to provide training for new adult leaders in how to work with youth to get them through the outdoor, on the water skills that are needed to get through the first couple of ranks. This course doesn't try to teach leadership skills. That's what CBadge is for, but it's intended to provide technical skills for on the water leaders. IOL, IOWLS or IOWLS is intended to be run at the council level. It's up to your council to determine who's a qualified instructor. Experienced skippers and mates are good candidates, but so are members of the Coast Guard Auxiliary, um, the Power Squadron, or, or other experienced boaters. The course is intended to be customized to your local boating environment. Just as IOLS talks about different camping techniques depending on what part of the country you're in, we talk about different boating environments, whether that's coastal or inland or sail or paddle or power. The goal is to support your Sea Scout leaders and your council on the waters and watercraft that they're likely to be using in their program. This course is designed to be run over a long weekend, a Friday evening to Sunday evening, or you can do it as a pair of single day sections depending on local needs. A huge bonus in this course, and, and to my mind, one of the most important features is that there's a series of lesson plans that participants can take with them back to their ships that they can use to help teach their scouts on the path to ordinary. That should really, really help with bootstrapping a new ship. These courses have been tested on the ordinary track at the Galveston Sea Scout Academy for the past couple of years with good results. Next slide, please. We're gonna take you through the course organization and then um, a detailed example of how you might run this course using keelboats on salt water. But it's really important to understand that you don't need either keelboats or salt water for this course. The course is intended to be adaptable to any sort of boating anywhere in the country. Your adults need to learn in the environment they'll be operating in. If that's sunfish on a small lake or paddlecraft on a river, that's where you should be teaching this course. I'm personally really excited about this course. I think it's gonna make a tremendous difference in our ability to grow the program. So let me introduce Cassie Johnson, who leads the program support group in the Sea Scout National Committee and who was the principal editor of these IELTS course materials. She'll take us through the course outline and philosophy. Cassie. Thank you. Um, basically, I want to talk to you a little bit about who can teach IELTS. And ideally, it's, it should be a council identified Sea Scout adult that's worked with their, their council training chairman. 
And the reason I, I want to stress that is because Sea Scouts is a member of the program family for Scouts BSA, for Scouts USA. We're still kind of unknown to a lot of our council training chairmen, and they may not know what's available available in terms of training for Sea Scouts or what our needs are. So if if you're that identified adult by your council that's going to run this course, I hope you'll work hand in hand with your council training chairman. So the person that your, your council chooses to run this program or your council commodore should really be scouting literate. They should know all about scouting programs, all of them, venturing, scouts, cubs, sea scouts, the whole family. They also need to know what's possible water-wise in their area. I live in Gulf Coast, Texas. I'm an hour and a half away from freshwater lakes where we can sail small boats. I'm an hour away from navigable rivers where we can run paddlecraft. I'm an hour and a half away from salt water, big water, where I can use a keel boat and go out and have a lot of fun. I'm kind of glad the camera's not working tonight because I'm sunburned. I just got in from having some fun. Um, but they need to be water wise and know what's possible in their area. And then they need to be competent in whatever program they're going to be teaching. For example, I, I have street cred on a sailboat, but if I were teaching a paddlecraft course for a new paddlecraft unit, I would be, I would be laughable because I wouldn't have the knowledge to impart to those participants that are brand new to the program. So you need to carefully identify that person that's going to train in your council. They need to, they just need to be literate, uh, water literate, vessel literate, and program literate. Then um, let's talk about the course itself. TW gave you a broad overview of, of what we're hoping to try to achieve, but I want you to think about who comes to Sea Scouts and what kind of people are our brand new participants. And we've kind of got three categories. Sometimes we have people who come to us and they've heard about the program and they're excited and they think it's going to be a great opportunity, but they don't know anything about scouting and they may not know very much about water or, or vessels. They just want to do it because it sounds like fun. That's a hard one. Or we get scouters who've come to us that have great scouting background and they want to do the next step with their young people and they want to join a uh, form a sea scout ship well they may not be water savvy or vessel savvy so you need a program that would be remarkably different for that first category and the second category and then a third category that comes to us are those sailors who love what they do they they've loved water all their lives and boating all their lives and they're excited to find that there's a whole new generation of young people that want to know what they love to do. And they come to us and they don't know the scouting side of the program. So depending on who those people in the new unit are, you're gonna to have to look at who they are, where they came from, what they know, what they envision for their unit, and how best to meet their needs. So what materials do you have? If you're the trainer coming to this course, uh, well, you have a couple of us that have run the pilot. Um, you there is an administrator guide, and you're going to find that this is really open-ended. You absolutely have to look at your participants and see what their needs are and design your course to meet those needs. Then um, we've tied the ANSI standards to our training because if you look at those, whether you're human-powered, uh, a power vessel, or a sail vessel, those are the basic things that you want all of your young people to be able to do so that you have confidence that they're going to be safe on the water and that your adults are going to be safe on the water. So when your participants leave, they've got a good resource and a good background of what their young people need to know. And then as TW mentioned, we have lesson plans for that cover all the apprentice rank, uh, rank requirements and ordinary rank requirements that can be taught in a classroom kind of setting. And the reason we did that is because we know we want our youth leadership to be helping to teach the program. And we know we want our adults to know program. Um, but sometimes when you're forming a brand new unit, you've got 
two groups of people, adults and young people, trying to learn the same materials and scrambling to find resources. So we wanted to put resources in the hands of brand new units so they don't have to do that scramble and invent from whole cloth um, things that you and I have been teaching for a long time. It's a starting point. Um, and ideally, your young people will take these lesson plans and do a little bit more study and add to and insert their own pictures and, and make them come alive for their unit. Um, you wanna show me the next slide, please? Okay, here are some of the lesson plans for Apprentice. And if you look at them very quickly, you'll see that basically these are things that are, are what a young people, if you're taking them out on the water, they absolutely, first thing they need to know is about life jackets. They need to know about distress signals. They need to know how to make a radio call. So if we get in trouble on the water, we know they'll be safe. Basic safe, uh, safety rules. But if they're a sailing kind of person and they're brand new to a unit, you might want to talk to them about, about those basic things that are covered in ideals and leadership and, and program. So, and, and let's look at the next slide as well. You can see that we've done the same thing for ordinary. And I know this is overwhelming. All you have to do is look at the rank requirements in the Sea Scout manual and you'll know pretty much that there's a lesson plan for it. The lesson plans, um, most of them have a PowerPoint accompaniment. All of them have a formal written out lesson plan. A lot of them have um, instructional materials or little quizzes or, or appendices that, that support the lesson plan. So that's, that's pretty much it. That gives you a lot to think about as you're tailoring the program to meet the needs of your participants. I know Rob's gonna talk about a program he's about to put on, but his participants are not the norm um, and his vessel is not the norm. He's got some people who are coming in with some heavy duty sailing experience. So don't be blown away by what Rob proposes, but it is it will meet the needs of the participants coming to his program. And if you need any help, down the line, just, just give me an email and, and we'll work it out. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Art Moad. He's my area commodore and he's the one who helped pull all this together for us in our area. And he's, he's going to talk to you about, I forget, it's Art's turn. <laughs> we'll talk about the classroom. Thank you, Art. So, We'll start at the very beginning and I will state the obvious because sometimes what's obvious to me isn't to other folks. IALS is the acronym that we use for uh, introduction on the water skills course. It's designed for small groups, six to eight participants and two instructors. And the reason it's done that is pretty much one-on-one uh, -on -one type uh, instruction. You get very close with the folks uh, for that weekend and there's nowhere to hide. You're right out front uh, with them and, uh, and learning takes place uh, very easily in that environment. So step one is to determine what kind of classroom or course that you're gonna put on. Uh, depending on what you select, the uh, content of the course will be very different. So if you're sailing on an inland lake, uh, it's gonna be very different from ocean sailing. Or if you have a paddle craft uh, canoeing or kayak ship, that's gonna be very different from sailing or motor boating. And scuba is gonna be uh, yet another option that's completely uh, separate. So once you made that determination, you know who your students are, you know what their interest is, you know what type ship they're gonna form, uh, you can begin uh, planning the classroom sessions and selecting the uh, lessons from the list that Cassie uh, just displayed. Uh, next slide, please. I'd recommend having a venue that houses at least 12 people. That's the eight participants, a uh, couple instructor, and then there may be a couple of uh, visitors uh, who show up so you need to have enough room to uh, to handle that crowd. Sleeping quarters because this is a uh, three-day weekend course in many instances uh, you'll need to have uh, separate uh, male-female facilities or partitions on the vessel so that uh, you can maintain the YPT guidelines. 
Also very important, again, depending on what type of course you're putting on is make sure that you can make arrangements with your marina or state or national park or scuba shop so that um, you will have that venue reserved uh, and not have an unpleasant surprise when you uh, wait too long. I want to follow up with what Cassie just said. Um, this is a basic course for new skippers or new uh, sea scouters. And so you want to use what I term simple vessels. Um, my, my son's an instructor pilot. He flies with American. And uh, I, I like to uh, make the analogy, if, if you were going to learn to fly an airplane, you wouldn't start out on a Boeing 787. You know, you would start out with a Piper or a Cessna and uh, learn to fly there and then move up to multi-engine and et cetera. And the, and the same with sea scouting. Uh, you don't start with the uh, most sophisticated boat that uh, you can find. You, uh, you start with simple ones that uh, kind of get them going in the right direction and where they want to go and uh, get back safely and then add instrumentation and radar and all that other stuff uh, later on. Next slide. When you uh, have this classroom, you've got it arranged, you've got the uh, space reserved. Uh, next thing you need to do is pick out the lesson plans that, uh, from the list that Cassie uh, provided, and then have handouts. Uh, you'll need lines for a Marlin Spike, uh, navigation aids ready. All that has to be in the classroom ready before the course. Uh, there are some radio simulators out there. So for those who are teaching radio, those things are really, really wonderful to have uh, in the classroom. And it gives you some confidence before you get out on the water and uh, use uh, real radios. And again, the uh, pre-cut line for Marlin Spike, uh, if you're going to be tying all these knights, uh, knots, you need to have the lines ready to go so that uh, you save time and uh, minimize the amount of time in the classroom and maximize the time on the water. And now with that introduction, I'd like to introduce uh, Rob Fries. He's, he's my skipper and uh, I sail and race with Rob and he's probably the, uh, the best I've ever run across. So uh, Rob, take it away. Okay, uh, thank you, Art. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to set up a keelboat IOWLS course. Um, we developed the prototype last fall on the boat that you see here. This is uh, SSTV Surly. It's a 40 foot sloop that we use for offshore racing. As Cassie pointed out, it's probably a little bit more intimidating than most of the boats that you'll ever be on. But we've got some, for the very first course that we're putting on, we've got some, some experienced skippers and we're gonna learn how to do this. Uh, in that prototype, we had skipper, we had scouters from Texas, Florida, and Virginia that helped us develop uh, some ideas on how to do this. And we're gonna, we develop much of what I'm gonna talk about in the next few slides. We're also planning to do our next IELTS course at the end of March uh, with skippers from, and mates from my course, uh, from my ship and from uh, ships around our area. In fact, I think I have uh, seven or eight participants and three instructors uh, on the course. Next slide, please. So, why a keelboard course? We've talked about um, where it can be done. It can be done on a keelboat. It can be done on paddle boat. But this is just one example of a potential IELTS course. In our area along the coast, many of our ships have keelboats ranging from 24 feet and up. So it makes sense for us to uh, enable our skippers and mates in our area to be proficient at teaching their, their scouts on the water. Next slide. So some of the things that you need to consider when you're putting on this course, um, from the syllabus, you, you read that you need to worry about vessel, you need to worry about venue, you need to worry about schedule, and you also need to recruit some participants. Uh, I'm gonna talk about each one of those in a little bit more detail as we get on. You also need to be thinking about budget, which might include course handouts, and on my next slide, I'll have some instruction on uh, the different types of course handouts. If you're a powerboat course, you probably need to be thinking about fuel. If we're gonna be motoring a lot, we might need to think about fuel, but after all, wind is free. That's why we sail, right? Food. Well, this is a chance to really take it up a notch because after all, nowhere in the Sea Scout manual does it say we have to rough it. 
And food can be an important motivating device in keeping morale up, especially after a hard or a good day on the water. Uh, you might think about slip fees. In our case, we're sailing out of a marina or out of a yacht club that provides its slip fees uh, free to us, so we don't have to worry about that. There may be some other items that are necessary for success that you might want to think about. Just kind of do an overall strategic plan. Next slide, please. So what you see here is one of our vessels that we use. Uh, we have a number of vessels available to use in my ship, ranging from 25 feet to 40 feet. The platform that you choose will depend upon the number of participants, the level of skill of the participants, uh, and uh, how many participants that you will have. The boat you see here is uh, SSTV Surly. It's a 1980 Click 40, and it sails with an average of 8 to 10 crew. The course that I'm putting on in March has got uh, at least 10 people. Probably it'll be 12, or 12 people, as Art mentioned earlier, when we're all said and done. Um, it, it, this particular picture shows that it's light air and we've got the kids on the downwind side so that we keep the sail shape right. Um, we also have another boat that we use that uses a slightly smaller crew of six to eight and that's um, SSTV Gremlin, our little Harbor 38. Both of these boats have been extensively used in our Texas Gulf Coast seal course for the past 14 years. Next slide, please. The other thing you need to consider after the vessel is the venue. Well, we're pretty lucky. Our venue is Galveston Bay, the fourth largest bay and estuary system in the US. It's comprised of upper, lower, east, and west Galveston Bay, Trinity Bay, and a number of rivers and bayous that lead into it. So we have everything from have very heavy salt water to, uh, to fresh water and brackish water. We see when we sail, we see everything from shrimpers to ocean going freighters and tankers, as well as numerous pleasure boats. We also take advantage of the numerous aids to navigation in the bay, ranging from day boards to range markers for the uh, Houston Ship Channel. We sail out of Clear Creek Channel, which I'm told is the busiest pleasure boat channel in the US, and the Houston Ship Channel has the largest amount of gross tonnage through, through it than anywhere else in the country. What wonderful conditions for training, don't you think? So next slide, please. So we talked earlier about handouts that you need, and I think that there's going to be a, uh, a Google Drive that you can, you can get the handouts that I'm going to be using to my, for my course. Some of the things that I send out to my participants are a uh, personal equipment list. I send them out the daily schedule and the menu ahead of time. That way I can check if there's any allergies. A boat underway checklist, an, operating che an engine operating checklist, and, and crew positions are necessary for operations. And then finally, there's the ANSI checklist that, uh, that uh, Cassie talked about, which provides an evaluation of what your participants have done and where they need extra work. Then particular handouts that you might give them might also include a station bill, because a lot of people may not know how to fill that out. Uh, so you can work with them to fill that out so that your participants know how to try do it with their scouts. A course plan, what your plan, the, uh, the course that you're planning to sail, a deck log, which is the record of what you, what you did sail. Uh, some, other, some other useful uh, handouts would be the daily summary, the navigator's report. We shift uh, crew positions about every 30 minutes when we're sailing in the Bay on a training course, and so we've got a deck rotation form that we use. And don't forget the duty roster, who's going to do the cooking and the cleanup during the galley. Um, also, I know that the, I just saw that the uh, lesson plans are available on uh, the cscout.org, but I was planning to also hand them out on a flash drive uh, for about five bucks as part of the course fee. Next slide, please. So, Let's kind of go over the, uh, the general schedule. Friday night, you're basically it's going to get, it's a get together evening. You're going to review the course objectives, review the course schedule. You're going to provision uh, the boat and stow the gear. You're going to spend some time going over the checklists and maybe a little bit of planning for the next day's sale. Um, hopefully you'll get the time, get to bed early so that you can rise the next morning bright and shine. We're lucky uh, in, our, in our case because we have one advantage. We have access to our Power Squadron's education building on the Yacht Club grounds. And it's really nice to have air conditioning when you train on the Texas summer. Next slide. 
Saturday morning, you wake up, you make uh, breakfast, you make colors uh, after reviewing flag etiquette, and then you spend the morning doing uh, reviewing lesson plans and getting ready for uh, the, covering those skills that are going to be needed on the water. Remember to use the edge method. This is the educate, part, educate portion of edge. Finally, we need to get ready to get underway and use some of the skills that we've touched on in the classroom. Next slide. This is when the fun begins. Uh, well, of course, the lesson plans are also fun, but this is where you get them out on the boat and you start working on the demonstrate and guide steps of the edge method. Uh, you should practice all the maneuvers you can, tacking, jibing, heaving to, setting and weighing anchor, and of course, man overboard drills, either quick turn or quick stop, whichever is your preference. Um, lunch is underway. You can either hove to or do it on the hook. Let everybody take a turn at the helm and rotate through all the crew positions. I like to do this on bell time every half hour. Uh, all in all, this is really the time to do demonstrate and guide. Next slide, please. At the end of the day, you've come in, you've had dinner, uh, you've uh, done a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, talking about what's going on in the course at dinner time. Uh, the evening is really for debriefing. It's what worked well, what needs work. Uh, you can see here a picture of our SEAL candidates discussing the evening <laughs> after their day on the water and in class. Remember that the last E in EDGE stands for enable, but I also like to think of it as evaluate. Perhaps to Sea Scouts, we should call it the EDGE E method. Next slide. Sunday morning, things should get a little bit better. They've been on the boat for a day. They're gonna go over the checklist again. They're gonna have, they're gonna make colors. And then uh, because it's Sunday morning, it's time for an IOWL, uh, I'm sorry, an interfaith uh, uh, worship service, scout zone worship service. Um, if your participants want to leave that, great. If not, you should be prepared to have one after colors. Um, then it's back to the classroom to pick up some more skills and some more knowledge that you can uh, use to uh, uh, on the water again. Finally, at around uh, 11, uh, 1100, it's time to get out on the water, grab and go a sandwich and get underway. Next slide, please. We're gonna end up Saturday, Sunday afternoon with, uh, with another sale. Uh, the evening before, they, they set up a course plan and, and we're gonna follow that plan. And don't forget a mid-afternoon snack of cheese and crackers. It always, uh, food always seems to make things go better. Afterwards in the slip, we're gonna talk about what went well and what needs work again. We're gonna go again and review the ANSI standards and the checklist and let them know what they did, what they did right, and what they need work on. Um, head to a local barbecue at the very end or a Tex-Mex restaurant. Um, as I said before, a great meal finishes a great day of sailing, and it also finishes a great course. Next slide, please. Okay, we've talked about a number of topics important to the course, uh, but please remember to make it fun, because if it's not fun, we're not, the kids are not going to have fun. Thank you. Next slide, please. And one more. All right, thanks. This is T.W. Cook again. All the materials for this course, including the lessons plan we've been talking about, can be found at the URL you see. You don't really need to memorize that. Go out to cscott.org, look under resources, volunteer training, You'll find ILs down about the middle of the page and there's a link to all of this stuff. Uh, we're also recording this webinar and we'll uh, put a link to that up there. So earlier Art suggested that you not try to learn on a 787, but uh, Rob just showed you how to do this on a 787. Uh, I wanna remind you though that, um, that that's not your only option. Cassie talked about the different types of people that um, are relevant for the, whom this course is relevant. Those are new to our program. People that have no sailing experience and no scouting experience or people with a lot of scouting experience, maybe not so much on the water experience or for a course more like what Rob is putting on, people with good sailing experience but who need to have a perspective on how they might teach this stuff to kids. Um, remember that this is not just about sailboats. The framework that is provided in the course can be used for any kind of boating. You can use this for powerboats, for paddlecraft. 
the example Rob just gave uses a, a kind of sailboat that isn't appropriate for everyone, but it is useful for some. So do what makes sense for your audience. Um, we don't have, we had a, several questions that have been asked during the course of this. Uh, Jose asked, can you use several instructors for different vessels? Certainly, you should use whatever mix of instructors makes sense to cover um, the kind of vessels you've got. Or if you've got small vessels, you're going to need more instructors because you're need, going to need maybe one instructor, maybe one on one with small boats, uh, depending on what you're working with. Uh, probably something similar for paddlecraft. Um, Chuck asked about where to get the lessons plans from, and, and that's what's shown here. Uh, Peter asked if uh, there's a course identifier assigned, and I believe that is to be found in the in the course syllabus that's uh, that's online. So yes, there is one of those. Um, if we don't have any other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. I'd like to hear any feedback that you might have about this. So if you have a question that comes up later, feel free to email me at twcook, T-W-C-O-O-K, at cscout.org. Uh, and I'll get it to the uh, appropriate person and get you the appropriate answer. Uh, any of our panelists have anything that they would like to add before we wrap up? Hearing nothing, then I would like to thank you for your attendance. Uh, look forward to seeing you out there on the water. Uh, we'll go ahead and close down now.